Welcome to the daily update, or I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, May 23rd, and then we'll see how things look for Friday, May 24th. One of the more interesting days than what we've seen in a little while. We had NVIDIA come out with their earnings, and they were like the lone wolf. They were up in Thursday's session, while the rest of the market saw a pretty broad-based decline. Now, we're still hanging on and looking positive for right now, but we're showing a lot of weakness coming into our charts. We have pretty much everything gone from our short-term list. We already have one extreme negative indicator. A big one is the parabolic SAR. That has switched over to negative for the S&P. That's what I consider to be a primary indicator and one that I really pay attention to. In my course, I go through primary, secondary, and tertiary type indicators that I use. The parabolic SAR is a primary indicator. That's kind of a big deal. Now, we can still get this back. The market can still bounce up. We have some potentially positive seasonality going into the latter part of May. Friday's session is going to be the last session before a three-day weekend. That's just something to be aware of. It's the unofficial start of summer. But some folks might want to shore up some things before a longer weekend. So that could bring a little bit, bit of pressure into the market. So we'll go through the charts. We'll look at things and just see where we're at right now. Before I get started, I am starting my program at the beginning of June. And right now when I do daily videos, which is the real foundation of the analysis and commentary that I do, it's the daily videos that I really focus on. The weekly videos that I do are more supplemental. And so what I'm going to be doing is if you are a member of the program, you get access to that right after these videos are uploaded. That's part of the membership. And the membership is $97 a month. If you don't want to become a member, but you still want to have early access to the daily videos, that will be $19 a month. So just be aware of that. If you have any feedback, here's an email at the bottom. You are more than welcome to talk to me about this. Leave a comment. Send me an email. We can set up a time to talk. Whatever works best for you. And I'm going to continue announcing this in every video until it actually happens. All right, let's go back now and talk about what happened and then look at some charts and see where things are headed or at least where they stand right now. We had a gap higher open and I don't watch the financial media, but they were probably just giddy at the open. If some of you do, like it's either CNBC, Bloomberg, um, Fox Business, their Yahoo, you know, they're all kinds of things. I can only imagine because I did spend decades watching the financial media, media and I found that 99% of it is completely useless. And if I do have it on, the sound is off just in case there's some kind of breaking news that happens. And that's usually what you'll find in most brokerage outfits pretty much around the world, but specifically in the U.S., and so it looked like, here we go, party time, gap higher open, prices hit, unfortunately, the daily high at R2 at 53.43. Okay, no problem. Then we started to fall. We went down below S1 at 53.25. No problem. We went down to the unchanged level. No problem. Okay, the gap has been filled. Now the market's going to decide, does it want to go up or does it want to go down from here? Prices chopped and there was a real struggle. I was really keeping an eye on this, and there was a real battle going on. We were able to chop back up to R1, and then we declined below the unchanged level, the daily pivot, below S1 at 52.88, and then down to S2 at 52.68, and we closed right at about S2. So what started off as looking like a real happy day with lots of parties, it just kind of got worse as the day went on. But on a percentage basis, we were only down 0.74%. But the swing from the high to the low, is that's pretty negative for right now. But we were still below average. Now, that can be encouraging on a down day, especially one of the more active days than what we've seen in a while. Volume didn't really spike up, at least as it applies to the S&P. 
And the technicals, we're hanging on to being positive, but we have to ask this question. Is this a pullback? Is this just a short-term decline? Or is this going to turn into an actual correction, which is usually when we drop about 10%? We don't know at this point. So we just want to keep an eye on things. Now, we can bounce back and recover from this, but we're seeing some internal weakness that I've been seeing for a few days now. Now it's starting to become more apparent on the charts. So we just want to be aware of that. And not so much right now about inflation and interest rates. I mean, that, that applies every day. But there's really been no catalyst to direct that one way or the other. Interest rates were up and the dollar was up, which also put pressure on stocks. And we, of course, have this whole list of geopolitical concerns, which don't really have an impact on the market, but could at any time if something escalates. So some comments. Every Dow stock was down. You don't see that very often. All 30 stocks, every one of them, and closed in the red in Thursday's session. NVIDIA's advanced. They, yeah, they had a good day. I think up 10%. I'll show you the chart later on. And I think there was this perception, and I even have a chart to show you later on, that it used to be as General Motors goes, so goes America. What's good for the GM is good for the U.S. Now it seems to be whatever NVIDIA is doing, that's pretty much the whole stock market right now. Well, it wasn't on Thursday. And then it was up solid, but the rest of the market had more of a broad-based decline. And we saw pretty much everything decline, except NVIDIA in Thursday's session. Now, look at our short-term list. Our stochastics, which take a little bit longer to develop, That this list is pretty much gone that we were watching. The slope oscillator, it's still positive, but now it's crossing below its moving average. So it's extreme positive, but now starting to turn negative. And here is the extreme negative reading already. Just in yesterday's video, the Stoke RSI was extreme positive. We decline on Thursday, now it's extreme negative. That's how touchy this indicator is. Intermediate term, our list is getting shorter now. The TTM squeeze, the Sean trend meter, and the 10-day moving average of the highs minus the lows for the S&P. Long term, we're coming down, but we're still extreme with the 150 and 200 simple moving averages. The scenario has not changed. The Fed's keeping rates higher for longer. Inflation hasn't slowed as much as they would like. And the market right now seems to be anticipating that there will be a rate cut in September. I'll be going through those charts over the weekend when I do the weekly video and I go through the probabilities of what might happen at upcoming Fed meetings. And we were getting a bump out of this decreasing quantitative tapering. Well, we'll have to see. Is that going to be able to, to bring things back and give more stimulus to the upside? Or are we starting to see something a little more substantial develop to the downside? The dollar was up and interest rates were up. That pressured stocks. We closed at 4.48% with the 10-year yield, where after Wednesday, we were at 4.43%. We're still inverted with the yield curves and have been now for a couple of years. Sentiment has now dropped down to neutral. We had been at 59, was still positive. When we go below 55, we've ticked into neutral. So we're actually coming down with sentiment. When it's not extreme and moving in one direction or the other, we tend to go with that. So things are turning more negative on a sentiment basis. And our trend is still positive, but they're starting to roll over. It, the ADX just a week or so ago finally calculated the, the positive things that it was seeing, and that was starting to develop. And now it's a little mixed up again because we see this downward move. And so it's rolling over a little bit, but it hasn't quite crossed below its moving average yet. And it's still above 20. So we would still default to a positive trend for at least right now. With the down day, our bias is negative, and I've changed our momentum because we've had two down days in a row. I've changed it to mixed, leaning a little bit more negative, where if you take the last number of days, we're still positive. So mixed to positive for right now. Now, out of all the things that I do in these videos, and I try to, I, I like to explain this every once in a while, I, tr I try not to express opinions. I'm trying to just present you with facts. 
And so by the time we get to the end of this video and we come to a conclusion, there's not an awful lot that, you know, you look at the charts and they, you can't really debate that necessarily. This part of the video is me, subjective. Bias, if we have an update, momentum, the last number of days taken together. This is kind of as close as I get to actually expressing my opinion in the videos. Everything else, I just try to take it for what it is and how it's going to affect the market. We we did get weekly initial jobless claims, came in at 215,000, less than the 219,000 that they had expected, and down from the 223,000 that we saw last week. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is still hanging in there. The We're not seeing a real massive tick up in at least initial jobless claims. And the continuing claims actually went up a little bit, a little bit of a concern here. And I have charts to show you at 1.794 million in the latest reading, or a week ago, it was at 1.786 million. These aren't really big. I don't have charts of this. The S&P Global U.S. Manufacturing PMI, the preliminary reading, it came in just a little bit above 50. So that shows slight expansion with manufacturing. Last time it came in right at 50. And then the services PMI came in at 54.8. That was That's showing a little bit more expansion. And this only stands to reason. Now, this is global, but the U.S. still has the biggest economy on Earth. And through the course of history, we changed from an agriculturally based society to an industrial based society to now we're more of a service type of society. And that's why we we tend to see the services in the actually doing a little bit more better. They came in at 54.8. Last time it was at 51.3. New home sales, less than expected at 634,000. They expected 680,000. Last time it was at 665,000. So here's some charts. Weekly jobless claims where we came down, but the moving average is still going up. And I'm having a little bit of a problem with my pointer came up to a pin instead of this nice little red dot that you can drive your cat crazy with. So we did come down, but the blue line is still going up overall. We'll want to see if what the trend is over time. Continuing claims also were up. We're starting to turn back up slowly with the moving average. And to me, the moving average is what's most important. It tries to get rid of the noise so we can get a better idea of what's what's the overall trend that's happening. Here's just showing initial jobless claims in red, continuing claims in blue, and then the unemployment rate that we received when the employment situation report came out. Here's more of a blow up to give you an idea of what it's looking like, just to kind of give this some more context. And then we had new home sales, where this is in thousands, and it is going up a little bit here, so showing a little bit of an improvement there. When you take prices in a three-month average on a year-over-year -year basis, we're ticking down just a little bit, but we're just right around the zero level there. Here's some Isabel Net blog charts. This is the cumulative change in real. That, that means inflation is taken into account. S&P and real profits. So inflation is calculated into this. Now, if you look at this, this was a bear market in the 60s and 70s, and you notice how the blue line is above what the S&P was doing. And then we had the 80s and 90s, which were strong bull markets, where you see the blue area is below price. And then we had the dot-com bubble. That's where things kind of got out of whack. The financial crisis, we were above, but then quickly went below and then came up out of that. Now, we're kind of above again. So this is a, a bit of a longer-term warning sign. This is kind of like the PE ratios and some of the longer term things that we look at because these can take years to actually develop. Then short interest in the S&P. I like to keep an eye on this. It's still pretty low, but it has been going up. Now these are folks that actually go in and instead of buy low and sell high, which means you're going long, they sell high and buy low. That's called going short. And we get the expression, don't sell yourself short when you talk yourself down with that. Now, there's a couple of different ways to look at this. People take a lot of risk doing this type of investing. And so there's a lot of requirements placed on them. If we really start to go up with the S&P and these folks are experiencing losses, they thought it was going to go down and it ends up going up. 
Well, that's built-in buyers on the sideline. It's not a real high part right now, but this is what we call a short cover rally or a short squeeze. Another way to look at this is more on the negative side, just saying, okay, these are people that have a lot of money and probably know what's going on, and they think that the S&P is going down, and so they're doing direct shorting of the market. It's not as relevant as it used to be because now we have inverse mutual funds. We have inverse ETFs. You can get into ETFs that go up in value when we go down. And so, and, and they're a lot, less, a lot less risky. You can also use put options, which go up in value as something goes down. So yeah, these are some strategies that I do, but I don't directly short because theoretically you have unlimited risk when you do this the s p if everything went really crazy could only go to zero but you know the idea that the dow was at four thousand when i first started and now it's at forty thousand what if you had shorted it for the last 30 years at four thousand my gosh i mean there's no limit to how high it can go so there's just better and more conservative approaches that you can take if you want to play the downside of the market. But this is just a statistic that I like to keep an eye on. And it's, but it's not really all that big right now. Then, and I'm not quite sure how to handle this. I've never seen this before. We deal with PE ratios all the time, but then at the dailyshot.com, and I don't have a, a, a membership to them, and I searched Google, and the only thing I found were other people asking the same question. What is this? And how is this different from the P.E. ratios that we use now? Is this based on monthly P.E. values, yearly P.E.? I don't know. I don't have an answer at this point. If any of you have any insight into this, uh, let me know, because I, I've not been able to find, and I spent quite a while trying to find What's the long-term P.E. ratio and how is that different from the P.E. ratio that we have now? Because we're at about, we're just getting above 20. If you look forward, and again, I, I don't know, is this looking backward or is this looking with forward earnings? I don't know. But this is coming in at 32.4. Well, it is going up. So on a relative basis, yeah, we could be concerned about that. But since I don't really know how this is made or what this is really telling us, I, I, I don't know what to read into this. So, but I, I thought it was interesting to look at anyway. Okay, then reactions to earnings were skewed to the downside this earnings season. So even if they beat on both, which means when they surprise on their earnings per share and their sales, Stocks are still kind of getting beat up a little bit. But if they miss on both, oh, they're just getting hammered right now. So, yeah, just that's earning season hasn't, uh, unless you're dealing with a few select companies like NVIDIA, it hasn't been a, really all that positive. It hasn't really given a lot of stimulus to the market lately. So, okay, and then... When are people expecting the first uh, Fed rate cut? 43% think it's going to be in the third quarter. So it would be this fall. And then in the last quarter, Thanksgiving, Christmas time, 39%, 2025, 14%. And then over the next two years, 2%. We don't know. This is going to change. The market's trying to figure all this out. But this is just what people think as of right now. And then corporate buybacks. This is something else that I've been trying to focus a little bit more on. This is the four-week average, which is the blue. And so we're seeing some buybacks. And then year-over-year -year basis, we're seeing this starting to go back up. And this is generally considered to be a positive thing when a company is willing to go out and buy their own stock. The risk appetite indicator. Now, remember, all of this, all of these charts are before Thursday's session. Folks are getting up. They're they're preferring to go more risk on right now, but not necessarily at an extreme level. And then, and I, I don't know how to read. This sounds like something I would type. All sizes lead saw inflows. I, I, should it be all sizes that lead? I, I don't know how to read that. But there's money coming back into the market 
but not as much as what we were seeing previously. The the lighter blue, that's what's happening right now. And most money, not as much, but most money is still going into large caps. We're seeing some money coming back into mid caps and a little bit money, a little bit of money coming into small caps right now. Okay, a couple of interesting things I did find here. As NVIDIA goes, so goes the valuation of the entire U.S. stock market. Not on Thursday, but this is NVIDIA and what it's been doing. And this is the P.E. ratio NVIDIA day. Now, is this like a national holiday now? Do we have national era? Or every time they come out with earnings, so we're, I guess we're going to get four holidays a year. What, are they going to shut down the market to celebrate this holiday? NVIDIA Day, interesting. So we just see a real correlation between what NVIDIA shares do and what the S&P PE ratio does. And I thought this was interesting, and there's a couple different ways to explain this. At the time this article was posted, stocks are up 12% this year, but nearly half of Americans think that they're down. What's going on? Number one could be bad asset. I, I shouldn't say that. The, the typical asset allocation model has been for retirement funds, put 60% into stocks, 40% into bonds. Now that 60% in stocks, unless you're in the Magnificent Seven, those stocks are doing okay, but not great. That 40%, we're negative on the year with the price of bonds. And so... If you look at your retirement account and you're doing a 60-40, you might not be seeing any returns at all. In fact, you might be down to this point. That's one of the reasons. The other one is the real solid disconnect between the stock market's U.S. economy and people's U.S. economy. Everyday people that have to go to McDonald's and pay four times as much for French fries than what they did just a couple of years ago. There's a real disconnect between them and prices are going up and people are, are struggling in a lot of areas. And so if they're struggling personally, they're kind of surprised if they even pay attention to the stock market to see, well, stocks are up. Well, what's going on with that? Well, there's my life is I'm down 12 percent this year. You know, it's, it's like things are not going well at the present time. OK, here's the intraday chart. And man, it started off looking like we were going to have one of the best days ever. Well, that lasted about five minutes. We hit the top R2. That was the high for the day. You see the red bar. We just started coming down. Now, at this point, this is just looking normal. We're just coming down and filling the gap. And we came down to the unchanged level. Then the, there was this battle going on. Are we going to take it higher? Are we going to take it lower? And that's what you see all this gyrating doing. And it looked like, okay, maybe we're going to be able to break back higher. We got almost back up to R1. Well, then we saw some pretty intense selling coming in, which took us down below the unchanged level, the daily pivot. We fell below S1. We actually fell below S2. And we saw a little bit of a bounce going into the close. We closed right at about S2. So when you take this compared to what we've been seeing lately, this is quite negative to open at the high and close pretty much on the low and see this huge swing down. When NVIDIA came out with one of the best earnings reports known to mankind. So here's the intraday chart, pretty much showing that same thing. And things were looking pretty solid right after we closed in Wednesday session. That's when NVIDIA reported. And that's when the futures started to look strong. We carried that into the pre-market session and then went down after that. This is encouraging, though, even with the decline. The blue line is still above the red line on our intraday chart. Growth is still outperforming value at this point. We're also looking okay, not great, but okay when we look at S&P growth to value with the ratio. It was actually up on the day. And it's not so much that growth was up, it's the value got hammered and hammered hard. And I'll show you that here in just, well, right here. See where growth was down 0.15%, where value down 1.39%. And it was down less for the mid caps and down less for the small caps. But we focus mainly on the large caps and we're almost unchanged as far as growth where value has just been getting hammered. But we're not really seeing any improvements here with our end of day charts. A little bit of a tick down with small cap growth to value, a little bit of a tick up with mid cap growth to value, and a little bit of a tick up here with S&P growth to value. 
not breaking out. We want to see if we're going back to the kind of an environment that that led us up out of the lows in 2022 and throughout 2023, we want to see this growth to value ratio really going up. And it's just not doing that. This is holding up better. We have a couple of ETFs here, a growth ETF and a value ETF. This was actually up almost 1%, and it's coming more up out of the rainbow. So this is a little more encouraging. But when we look at discretionary to staples, eh, nothing much here going on. Still down at its 200-day moving average when we look at this ratio. Large cap growth, it held up fairly well. But the negative part of the day was, it might be hard to see, but we opened at the top and closed near the bottom. But on a percentage basis, it wasn't as big of a change. The Wilshire took it down a little bit too. So we saw some broad market declines. And this is with the ADX. It's a little confused right now. It was preparing for the green line to stay on top and, and go up. But now that it's coming down, the ADX is just coming back down to its moving average. But it hasn't quite crossed over yet. And we're seeing a little bit more pronounced there with the short term. We're coming right down to the moving average. Volume, it did turn up, but we're still seeing it trailing off. Now, on a down day, that can be rather encouraging. What has been concerning us is as we were going up with the S&P, volume has been going lower. And that kind of makes you feel like maybe this climb is built on sand. Not necessarily. We we could still recover and get back from this. Or that's why we have to ask the question, is this just a short-term anomaly or is this the beginning of something? Are we going to actually see more of a sustained decline? Sentiment, we turn back up with the ulcer index with the down day. We do have this latest reading from Investors Intelligence. They came in at 3.45. Yeah, a little bit extreme positive, but not really extreme. We ticked back up with the VIX as to be expected. A lot of fear coming into the market, both with the line chart and the bar chart. And we have been seeing a real pickup in the VIX of the VIX. It actually got above the moving averages and closed above that with the bar chart and the line chart. And the momentum for the VIX has been down, but with this big upward move, we're seeing the MACD starting to roll back and could potentially turn positive if we see more declines. We're keeping an eye on the skew index. We haven't really dropped. We're just on the border of this red area. If we go up into this red area, that means the market is expecting some kind of a big move. What we don't know is if, it, if that's going to be an up move or a down move. So we're just watching this for right now. But it is showing, it, it's getting near that extreme territory. And I actually have some updated charts here. The equity put call ratio, not surprising on a down day, went up. And we're starting to go back up after almost getting extreme with the five-day chart. Volatility risk premium, not really moving all that much. We actually ticked down just a little bit, and we're still below this band. This is suggesting the volatility is not picking up that much, according to this indicator. We did tick up with this fear gauge, and we also ticked up with this other fear gauge that we follow. We do have the latest reading from the American Association of Individual Investors. Now, this was a week ago. They were just barely starting to get extreme positive. We have just a little bit above here. So, yeah, we could go with that. It, it, we really get concerned when they get up above this pink line here. But where we're at, we can we generally go with that. And we also watch the 50-day moving average, which has been trending higher. All right, our advanced decline line studies. We're turning down based on price and volume. We're still above the moving averages, but look at these red bars going down here. Is this some kind of a washout decline or is this, like I said, the beginning of something? New highs, new lows. We're rolling over with the five period. We're starting to turn down with the 10 period. Now this could be taken as positive. We're rolling over because the new highs are contracting. We're seeing a little bit of an expansion in new lows, but not like what we see during full-fledged declines. But we want to keep an eye on this. If we see more weakness, are we going to see an expansion of the new lows? The advanced decline ratio, on a short-term basis, we've dropped below zero. That's the 19-day moving average. We're turning down with the 39-day, but we're still above zero. So this is short-term negative still hanging in there more intermediate term 
Accumulation distribution, we did come down, but we're still above the moving average. The chicken money flow declining, but it's, it's showing a little bit more weakness. But for now, it's still positive. The chicken oscillator declined, but it's still above zero. We did see a real turn down with the cumulative advanced decline line for the S&P. Our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE did drop. And our other NYSE advanced decline line also showed a decline. We look at the common stock. We decline based on price and volume. We look at it, the S&P advanced decline line cumulative based on price where we're coming down. We're also coming down based on volume. We're still above the moving averages, but we saw a decline with our advanced decline line studies pretty much across the board. Here's our daily chart. We're not really getting any points of support or resistance right now. If we keep falling, we might come down to this pivot point, which is at about 5206. So that would still be another 130 plus point drop from where we're at right now. Here's the Stoke RSI just yesterday. It was extreme positive. Now it's extreme negative. And all the other charts are now gone. But the stochastics, we are coming down and no longer extreme in the short term, rolling over, but still extreme in the intermediate term, rolling over slowly in the long term and still extreme positive there. We actually closed down below the double and triple exponential moving averages based on 20 periods. We're coming down with our 20, 50, and 200. We're also declining, but still positive with the force index. We want to keep an eye on the 20 period moving averages. If we keep falling, will one of these end up providing some kind of support? Standard deviations, we had been up in the plus three channel. Now we're right on the border, well, a little bit into the plus one channel currently. The balance of power is still positive, but it's declining. The go no go has gone from being dark blue to light blue. So that's looking a little more negative there. We're coming off of the highest high value, but we're still above the midpoint. The TTM squeeze, we have two days now where the color has changed from light blue to dark blue, and we're starting to see the TTM going down. And this is just to give a little bit longer perspective, see other times when we had extreme readings and then what the market did after that. We're still above both the double and triple exponential moving averages based on 50 periods. So this blue line for right now may be providing some kind of support. And we wanna keep an eye on the 50 period moving averages in case we see more weakness. The ease of movement declined, but it's still above zero. And the Arun, get this, it was actually up. The green line actually went up and the red line is going down. Go figure. We're dropping more negative with the S&P McClellan oscillator. We were just barely less than a point below zero after Wednesday. We're decidedly more negative after Thursday. So now we're starting to roll over with the summation index based on price and volume. And we saw that kind of starting to develop. We're also looking more negative with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So we're starting to roll over with the summation index for the NYSE based on price and volume. This has been a warning sign. It seems to be telling us something. The Swenland Trading Oscillator. We were still going up and then sideways with the S&P, especially the Swenland Trading Oscillator based on price was declining. We've now dropped below zero based on price and volume. So this has actually turned negative now. Momentum, yeah, rolling over a little bit, but we're looking a little bit more pronounced when we look at this based on price and volume individually. We're coming down with the PMOs that are rising. We're on actually another decline and we might get extreme negative. The buy signals are rolling over and we're starting to turn over with the PMOs that are above zero. But however here, we are still neutral when we look at the elders impulse system for the S&P. This is a big deal. The parabolic SAR now has a dot on top. This is one of the primary indicators that I really look at. The fact that this is switched over, that is quite negative, and that's more intermediate term. The slope oscillator, still extreme positive, but now crossing below its moving average. The MACD rolling over, but hasn't crossed the moving average yet. So we're seeing a little bit more movement with the slope oscillator. The TSI rolling over a bit. We're rolling over in the intermediate term, but still above the moving averages. We're still going up with our longer term oscillators. We're still above all the moving averages here in the moving average tree. And if we see more weakness, will one of these lines provide support? 
The bullish percent index, yeah, it came down, but didn't show an awful lot of weakness. We also declined with the NYSE bullish percent index, and we actually ticked up a little bit with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. The money flow is declining, but still above 50. We're declining with the ultimate oscillator, but still above 50. We're no longer extreme with the vortex. We're coming down with the green line, but it's still on top. We're coming down with the RSI 14, and we're no longer extreme with the RSI 9. We're coming down with on balance volume, but we're still above the moving average. We're declining below 50 when we look at the stocks above their 20 period moving averages inside of the S&P. So now we're wondering, okay, what's going on here? Have we seen the extent of this upward thrust? Now, the, the other times that we did see an initial thrust, yeah, we saw some negative readings here, and then it picked up later on. Is that going to be more what happens this time? We're dropping below 50 with the 50 period simple moving average study. We're coming down with the 100. We're also declining with the 200. The copy curve is positive, but rolling over. The Sean trend meter is declining, but still in that second area of being extreme positive. The Pring bottom fissure is still working off of a buy signal, but now it's starting to roll over. And I still don't know what to do here. It's I I, I don't want to say if we're starting a decline, this is this was told to us by the mass index because we had this reading a week ago. And I don't I don't think that long of a delay is valid. Some people might want to fudge the numbers and say plus or minus. I like things that are more right on. Our different charts, We're seeing more of a doji move here with the hike in Ashi. We're still positive with the Kegi. We're still positive with the Renko. And we're still positive with the three-line break. So on a trend basis, we're still looking okay for right now. It's some of our other indicators that are showing more of the weakness. Long term, we're coming down with the 150 and 200. If we see more weakness here, we might actually drop below the red line with the 150. And we changed a little bit here with the color market model. In the short term, the mid caps and small caps, they're negative now with all the other markets still being in uptrends. And we're still negative with bonds in the intermediate and long term. We're down with commodities. Now with the dollar going back up, the short term trend has switched back to positive. No change here with the decision point scorecard. And we saw an awful lot of green or blue to start off today. Boy, just party, party. The only problem is we had discretionary, had a MACD bearish crossover to start the day. That's not a good thing. We want discretionary to do well. Volatility set a four week low, not for a long, or four year low, not for long. SP set a new all time high, not for long. NASDAQ set a new all time high, not for long. And then everything just kind of got a lot more negative. And gold is actually seeing a, a bit of a downturn right now. Okay, here are the in, or the sectors, and everything was down. Actually, I should have sorted this from the most negative. Real estate was down the most, utilities got hit hard and discretionary got hit. The financial sector, which is still looking okay. Staples was in about the middle part, but tech was down, but it held up better than the other sectors. Energy was down, but also held up a little bit better, and healthcare was one of the better areas. Here's our equal weight, where we just really spiked up here, because we saw more broad market declines, and so the mega caps are holding up a bit better. So we're seeing this breaking out with this ratio. The Dow fell below this pivot point, but it's still above its 50-day moving average. And I, I'm sure I've seen it before, but I don't remember a day when every single Dow stock was down. This is just looking pretty pathetic here. The transports to S&P ratio, this could just continues to fall as transports are still under a lot of pressure We've actually changed over to negative with the diamonds. That's the Dow or the NASDAQ. Again, we didn't show, if you look at a line chart on here, it doesn't look all that bad. What's scary is we gapped higher and then closed at the low. Seeing that same thing here with the NASDAQ 100. But we're still neutral with the Elder's Impulse System for the Qs. And we're still looking positive with the momentum of the NASDAQ 100, but this could be starting to roll over now. The Qs, yeah, we're still above these lines, so these moving averages continue to go up. The small caps, of course, we got to the high end of the range. What do we have to do? Go down, and that's what happened. 
we came right down to the 50-day moving average, and we bounced up just a little bit off of that. We turned negative with the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps. We're dropping below 50 with the Russell 2000 small caps with the RSI here. We did hold up above the 50-day moving average here as well, but the momentum is starting to roll over and look negative. The mid caps came right down to its 50-day moving average. And this has been one of the stronger areas of the market. And this gave us some support when we were headed down in April. This is a pivot point, And this is where we bounced from. So that's why we want to keep an eye on the mid caps for right now. They are important. The small caps, eh, not so much, just because they've been really underperforming. But we want to keep an eye on the mid caps. But we've turned negative now with the mid-caps when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. Apple was down over 2%, still above its 200-day moving average, but still in a downtrend. However, the shorter-term moving average is still going up. Tesla, of course, it had to be down 3.5%, coming back down to its 50-day moving average, also in a downtrend. And here's the loan NVIDIA. up. I, I thought it was 10%. Closed a bit off of its highs. It was up 9.32%. This was the star of Thursday's session, but it didn't shine brightly enough to help the rest of the market. Microsoft was down, still above their 50-day moving average. Meta was down, still below their 50-day moving average. Amazon was down, just right about at its 50-day moving average. Google was down, still above its 50-day moving average. Netflix was down, still above its 50-day moving What happened to these Magnificent Seven? Is it the Magnificent One now? Interesting. The FANG index, after setting an all-time high, did show a decline. The financial sector coming back down to its 50-day moving average. And this ratio is actually declining a little bit here. And it's not because tech was strong. It's because Staples got shot with everything else. So this ratio going down is positive for things right now. The dollar was up and crossing back above both of these moving averages and still in an uptrend. Looking at the S&P with world stocks, trailing off a little bit with the short-term relationship, relationship, still having a tendency to go up when we look at the 50-period relationship. Staples got hammered with everything else, but still above its 50-day moving average. Utilities got hammered, still looking pretty solid though for the time being healthcare was down but also still in an uptrend energy was down and dropping a little bit below further below its 50-day moving average but when you look at this these are all stocks yeah we pulled back but we're still above the 50-day moving average what we're going to be waiting to see is follow through bonds we were up with the 10-year yield we were down with the 10-year based on price and then, and I don't have any of the stock to bond ratio charts that I've been showing because they were all down in Thursday's session. But this is a little bit encouraging. The Qs are actually showing an improvement over the S&P. But don't get too hung up on that because discretionary continues to underperform the S&P. We did see large cap growth outperforming large cap value. So we saw an improvement with the large caps, yeah, a little bit of improvement with the mid caps and the small caps. The 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows were still extreme. That's longer term, and that momentum is still hanging in there for right now. We dropped below the midpoint based on price looking at our 19-day advanced decline line, but we're still above zero when we look at this based on volume. The S&P to utilities ratio ticked up a little bit. We want to see this continue to go up to give more support to the S&P. The staples to S&P ratio did tick down a little bit. We want to see this continue to decline to give more support to the S&P. So what's our outlook for Friday? We're positive, but we're developing weakness. And we're seeing some potential technical damage here. And a lot of that, we're just seeing things rolling over. The big thing to me is that parabolic SAR. We're going to get durable goods and consumer sentiment in Friday's session and then keeping an eye on all the geopolitical things. And here's what we're going to have in Friday's session. Here's also another look at Friday's session. Seasonality. We're neutral to negative with the Dow and NASDAQ, where we're slightly neutral to pot, where we are neutral to positive with the S&P 500. We're also going to be finishing up the week after options expiration, where it tends to be an up week. 
Seasonally, we do see some positive seasonality. The green dashed line is going up. And, and we're potentially entering the stronger time of May. Now, we'll have to see if if real reality and historical seasonality, if they line up with each other. So this could show some strength going on later on. Friday is one of the more positive days. We have that going for us. And then this is... We're trying to line up if you take out 2020, you know, just take out anything that doesn't make sense. And now all of a sudden this chart makes sense. So we, but we, even during this time, we're still coming into this latter part of May where we might see a bit of a bounce here, but we never really saw much in the way of weakness either. Are they going to flip flop for the next few days? We don't know that yet. This is the Carson chart showing that from the 25th going on, we have positive seasonality when you look at 1950 to 2023. Tom Bally, though, still has this negative until we get beyond the 25th before we enter into the latter part of the month. So the warning signs, I don't know about the mass index. I've been, if you've been watching these videos for a while, I don't really want to go through and explain all this again. I just see it as becoming less and less relevant as each day goes by. We're still keeping an eye on the staples and utilities. We did set a new all-time high multiple times with the S&P. We set an intraday high with the S&P. But it's very strange, or not normal, I should say, for staples and utilities to be strong, and yet we're making all-time highs. Because staples and utilities tends to be a defensive move. And we're also keeping an eye on energy, which lately has been more defensive. And then healthcare is also defensive. The growth to value ratios, yeah, showing a little bit of improvement, but they're not leading. Discretionary to staples, really not seeing any improvement there. The Swinland trading oscillator has now turned negative. The parabolic SAR is now negative. The slope oscillator has crossed below its moving average, even though it is still extreme positive. And the equity put call ratio based on five periods, it's now going up. And that tends to be negative for the market. We still have a pretty long list here of positive things, but a lot of these are starting to show some weakness that are going to turn even more weak if we see follow through downside. So our conclusion, we're positive for right now, but weakness is developing. That's more of a factual statement. What we're wondering right now is, is it going to continue or are we going to see some buyers coming into the market? That's what we're seeing in the short and intermediate term. We're still positive in the long term currently. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a really good day and I will talk to you in the next video.